Greetings. Welcome G2 GCC family and internet audience. I'm Minister Bernal Simmons III and I'll be bringing the message today. We're going to start by getting uh, opening up with a word of prayer and we're going to get right into the message. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. You are our Savior. You are our Lord. You, you are our Creator. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sin and for our sake. We thank you, Father, that he raised up from the dead. We thank you, Father God, that we, hallelujah, have the Holy Spirit who Jesus sent to us. The Holy Spirit is the anointing, and it is the anointing that we ask to be in this message. Right now, Father God, we just ask that you think and speak through me, Father, and Father, that it will bless the hearers and provide glory to you. We thank you, Father God. We keep no glory for ourselves. Well, we give it all to you. We thank you, Father, and give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our message today, we're t still teaching on the theme of angels. And the title of this message is Angels, colon, Their Role in God's Plan. Angels, colon, Their Role in God's Plan. And our foundation scriptures are found in Psalm 103, verses 19 and 20 through 21, and Hebrews chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. Now, the purpose today is to teach you about the significant role angels play in God's plan for mankind. And our goal is that you'll be able to clearly understand, preferably by the end of this message, that the intervention of angels in the earth realm was and is critical to our salvation, reaching the lost, and to the church. I'll repeat that. You'll be able to clearly understand that the intervention of angels in the earth realm was and is critical to our salvation, reaching the lost, and to the church. Now, let's go to Psalm 103, verse 19. All righty. It says, the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. That scripture highlights some things that angels do. And what they're responsible for. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. And we're in the King James Version. It, uh, verse 13 says, But to which of the angels said he, said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? So we have a few words we're going to break down from both of those uh, foundation scriptures. First, out of Psalm 103, <clears throat> we have the word angel. And uh, the Hebrew word for that is number 4397, and it's pronounced malak or malak, malak, uh, M-A-L-A-K. And this word is from the root word that means to dispatch as a deputy, to dispatch as a deputy. The meaning is a messenger, a representative, and there's also another meaning, the theophonic uh, angel, which is a tangible manifestation of an angel. OK. In Hebrews. Um, we're going to look at angel in the Greek. That is G 32. And the word is angelos. That's A-G-G-E-L-O-S. And that word is from the word which means to bring tidings. It also means a messenger envoy or a special agent, one who is sent, an angel, a messenger from God. So you look at that definition and it seems like it could apply to 
uh, people or also to the angelic host that we're going to have this message about today. <clears throat> the other word is in verse 14 that we're going to look at and break down, and that's minister. G1248, uh, the word is diaconia, diaconia, D-I-A-K-O-N-I-A, and it means service, especially of those who execute the commands of others of those who by the command of God proclaim and promote, promote religion among men. It also means to the service of those who prepare and present food. Now angels have done that, all of those things. But again, that seems like it applies to people as well. Now, we're gonna cover a lot today. Uh, as I introduce the message, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some things that angels did. We're going to look at what angels did in the Old Testament. We're going to look what they did. We'll look at what they did in the New Testament. We're going to look at what uh, they were called in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at what they were called in the New Testament. So you turn your Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22. Now, one of the things angels did uh, was uh, they spoke from heaven. In this particular case, they spoke from heaven to Abraham. And it was at a very critical point uh, in, uh, in our history because Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac in direct obedience to God. And the angel intervened in this situation. So let's go to verse 11. <clears throat> And it says, and the angel of the Lord called to him, talking about Abraham, out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his thorns. And Abraham took the ram, went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So we see angels involved here. They intervene at the, dispatch, at the dispatchment of God <clears throat> to that situation to stop Abraham from doing what God had told him to do. God saw a likeness to himself. Abraham was willing to not withhold his son from the Lord. And here it is. It's a reflection of what God did. God gave his only begotten son for us. So angels were critical at this point. They stopped that from happening because if there's no Isaac, where will Jacob come from? If there's no Jacob, then where were the 12 sons, which later comprised the tribe, the tribe of Israel, come from? So it was very critical that they were involved at that point. Um, angels also spoke in dreams in the Old Testament. We did it in the New too. So we'll go to Genesis 31. Genesis 31. And go to verse 11. Jacob's brother, they didn't like the fact that he dreamed. They said, behold, here comes the dreamer. Behold, the dreamer, com the dreamer cometh. Uh, in verse 11, we see that an angel of God spake unto me in a dream. This is Jacob saying, Jacob. And I said, here I am or him. Here am I. And he said, lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and gristled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. We'll stop there. Laban was Jacob's father-in-law, and, and Laban pulled a fast one on Jacob. Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, but Laban put Leah in, and so Jacob had to work. He had to work, I think, seven years to get the opportunity to marry Rachel. And then after Laban fooled him and sent in Leah, uh, that's not the one that he wanted. He wanted Rachel. So Laban, <laughs> Laban uh, had Jacob work for him another seven years. So what the angel was doing was giving him insight on what to do uh, to increase him so that he can hurry up and get out from under uh, Laban. So it's critical. 
Jacob probably still been working for him had not the angel intervened and given him critical information at that time. Okay, what else did angels do? This is Old Testament still. We go to Exodus chapter 23. Here's a couple of examples of that. Exodus 23. Go to verse 20. <clears throat> so what, what angels did also when they did intervene, they preserved, protected, they guided, um, uh, usually the people or even a person. Um, so we're going to look at 23. We're going to look at verse 20, uh, Exodus 23, verse uh, 20. Um, it says, Behold, I sent an angel, this is a capital A, before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. We're talking about an angel here. Wow. Wow. So he said that the angel will go before them and keep them in the way and bring them to the place which the Lord has prepared. So it's critical that we are in the right place at the right time. God's purposes, because <clears throat> if we're out of place, then we're out of the will of God. God can't get accomplished what he wants to get done. So what he would do is he would dispatch an angel to go and keep things on tracks. We did in the Old Testament. So uh, another instance is Psalm 91, uh, verse 11. You can look at that in Isaiah 63, verse 9. So what else did uh, what else did angels do in the Old Testament? Uh, they drove away Israel's enemies. That's in Exodus 33, 2. Um, they spoke of their own. They spoke of their own accord. Uh, for God. So they would show up and they would say, like, the Lord is with you. So they would speak in, in, in those terms. So like they got a message from God and now they're relaying it uh, to them. The other thing that they did also, they spoke as if God were speaking directly uh, through them. And an example of that is in Numbers 22. And that's verse 32. <clears throat> Now, we move to the New Testament. What did angels do in the New Testament? Well, they spoke to they spoke uh, to Joseph in dreams. So they spoke in dreams. So you see that they were in the Old Testament. They did it. They spoke to Jacob uh, and then they spoke to uh, Joseph, <coughs> who uh, married Mary. Let's go to Matthew. This is a remarkable account because uh, of what was at stake here back in that time. Uh, and you're about to see, go to verse 20, Matthew 1, verse 20. <clears throat> okay, it's talking about Joseph here. He said, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. This is uh, Joseph in a dream saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary, take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so in a dream, the angel spoke to Joseph, and, and, and I imagine that Joseph was really debating. It's like, okay, the woman he's supposed to marry is now telling him that <laughs> she has not known a man, but yet she's pregnant. Uh, that's a tall order. But the angel showed up. Say, Joseph said, you know what? I'm out of here, man. I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. It's been so much controversy. But the angel reassured him that this was of God. And it was critical that uh, that Joseph fulfilled his role uh, as, as being Mary's husband and help raising Jesus. All right. What else? What does the angels do? Angels announced Jesus's birth. Ah, we knew that it was to the shepherds. And that's in Luke chapter two, verse 10. So we won't turn there, but we'll give that to you. What else did angels do in the New Testament? They testified of Jesus's resurrection at the tomb. They testified or they told of Jesus, Jesus's resurrection at the tomb. Ah, and that's in Matthew 28, verse five. There's another account in Luke 24, verse 23. And there's another account in John 20, verse 12. Here's an interesting one. What were angels involved in? <clears throat> I'm sure they were doing this too in the Old Testament. 
but it wasn't accounted there. So it, they transport the dead, those who are counted righteous. They transport them to Abraham's bosom. And that's found in Luke 16, verse 22. Let's go take a look at that. Luke 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died, talking about Lazarus, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Uh, and we see that the rich man died also and was buried, but he went to hell. So I'm sure they dropped him off there too. Well, not two, but dropped him off in hell, took Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. So they transport the dead, those who are counted righteous. This is before Jesus, of course, uh, to Abraham's uh, bosom. Let's go that chapter. Let's go to Luke 15. I really like this one. Um, what did angels do? They rejoice. When one sinner repents, they rejoice when one sinner repents. Luke 15, verse 10. I'll tell you why I like that here in a second. Uh, let's see here. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy. This is Jesus talking. There is joy in the presence of angels over one sinner that repented. So angels are rejoicing over one sinner that repented. That to me, I like that because that to me gives me the takeaway that angels are thoroughly involved in getting people saved and, and they love seeing God's plan come together and work. God is all about the lost, all about redeeming every soul back to himself. He did. He sent Jesus for he sent his best to get that done in your earth realm. And the angels were critical, are critical still, even <clears throat> in that endeavor. And they're still going to be at work in our future. We'll get to that in a second. But that's one of my favorite ones that angels, the angels do. They rejoice when one sinner repents. That is important. <clears throat> All right. What else did they do? Well, you know, the church got started uh, after Jesus uh, left, went back to the father. Uh, the, the apostles started the church. And of course, there were some issues because the Pharisees were coming against them. They were imprisoned. So uh, angels helped out the church and helped it get going by um, freeing. The, well, they freed Peter. <clears throat> Peter was thrown into prison. Let's see. Let's go to Acts chapter 12. Acts 12. Let's go to verse 7. Here it is. We see. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side. He hit him and said, get up, man. And raised him up, saying, arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said to him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and he followed him. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Now, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. So after the angel's role there was completed, he left. So his whole thing was his whole purpose was to get Peter out of prison. Hallelujah. Do you think the angels are still involved in that process today? I do. I do believe the angels still have that work that they're doing, um, getting people out of sticky situations. OK. <clears throat> they also help reach the loss in the New Testament. You see that they help reach the loss. So let's go to Acts chapter eight. Acts chapter 8, let's go to verse 26. This is kind of lengthy, but we'll go through it. It says, And the angel of the Lord, here's the angel of the Lord, spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians 
who had a, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias or Isaiah, the prophet. <clears throat> then the spirit said to Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understand thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the, the place of the scripture, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and a lamb dumb before his shearer. So open he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this prophet? Speaketh this, the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now it goes on to say they were going along the way and uh, they got to the point where they saw some water and, uh, and Philip uh, baptized the eunuch. And then after <clears throat> afterwards, uh, Philip was taken and uh, relocated about 18 miles away uh, where he was he was again teaching. So we see that that the critical thing was the angel of the Lord directed Philip to go to a particular place because there was someone who was struggling with understanding the word. So angels are involved <laughs> in getting people saved. So we see that's a wonderful example. <clears throat> um, other mentions of what angels did in the uh, the New Testament. Now, in our future, they were known as they're, they're going to be known as the reapers, the one who come in the end time harvest and gather the souls <clears throat> uh, and, and, and take them where they're supposed to go. There are a lot of accounts of this. There's Matthew chapter 13, uh, beginning at verse 39. You read that through 49. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 31. And then when you actually see it happen, Revelation 14, uh, verses 15 through 18. I know there's a lot of scripture. Bear with me. But this is a Bible study. So we're not going to do them all uh, right here, but we're giving them to you so that you can continue this study so you can get more uh, meat of this in you. All right. So in the future, there are also the angels will accompany Jesus at his return. And Jesus makes several references to that. Um, <clears throat> Matthew 16, verse 27. Uh, Mark 8, verse 38. Uh, and Second Thessalonians 1 verse 7. So there's men mention of them in the end time. So we just covered what angels did in the Old Testament and New Testament. <clears throat> um, so so we did go through that. And so what we so what we're going to do now is talk about just briefly about what angels were called in the Old Testament. Actually, I should have done that first. But we're OK. Some of the names that angels were called or referred to as angel of the Lord. That's the most common. <clears throat> uh, and I believe that just shows that who whose side the angels on. So is it, is it the angel of the Lord or is the angel of the, of the devil? Angel of the Lord. Um, the angel of the Lord. That was like specific. There's a capital A. Uh, Malak. Yahweh, the angel of the Lord, um, that's found in Genesis 16, verse 7, where the angel talks to Hagar, um, who was the mother of Ishmael. And then uh, chapter 22, verses 11 through 13, where he's talking to Abraham. That was the angel of the Lord. We just covered that. Um, they were also referred to as the angel of God. Malak, or M-A-L-A-K, Elohim. And that's in Genesis 21, 17 through 19. There's also the angel of his presence. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Let's go there. He's Exodus chapter 33. Angel of his presence. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said to him, if thy presence <laughs> go not with me, Carry us not up hence. So 
Uh, this is Moses, Lord and Moses having a conversation. My presence will go with thee. Evil angels. They were called evil angels. And this is Psalm 78. And this is uh, verse 49. And this is in reference to when the Israelites uh, were in the wilderness and they provoked God and they they stirred up his wrath, his anger. And God sent <laughs> evil angels, it says, uh, to them. And they were in a heap of trouble. Seraph. Angels were called in the Old Testament seraph, which means burning one. And there are two accounts of this in Isaiah 6, verse 2, Isaiah 6, verse 6. And these were special or special class of angels. They had six wings, two that covered their feet, two that covered their face, and two that they flew with. So there's cherub <clears throat> or cherubim, plural. These are angelic beings. It was a cherub that was placed at the garden it was placed as the guardian of the Garden of Eden uh, after man had sinned and were driven out. So that cherub and then a flaming sword were put there to keep <clears throat> and protect the tree of life. Another name angels were referred to as chief prince. Chief prince. Or in the New Testament, it would be the equivalent of an archangel. And that's found in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13 verse 21 and in Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and that tree, that chief prince or archangel is none other than Michael all right and one interesting one that we're going to use here in a second um, we're going to relate this message to sin uh, is the anointed cherub that covereth the anointed cherub that covereth and that's out of Ezekiel 28 Verses 14 through 18. We'll go there in a minute. This is referring to Lucifer. Also, the lamentation of the king of, was it the king, uh, king Tyrus? <clears throat> but before that, we're going to go on to the New Testament. Uh, angels were referred to as angel of the Lord in the New Testament. That's Luke chapter 1. Uh, the angels of God again. We see that in Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Uh, Jesus referred to them as holy angels, uh, the angel of the Lord. They're also referred there. Angel of light. Here's a reference to Satan. Satan was transformed uh, into an angel of light. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 14, 11, 14, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. Strong angel. Revelation 5, verse 2. And again, we see another reference of Michael, the archangel or chief prince. In Jude 9, Revelation 12, verse 7. Uh, the angel that appeared to Zechariah, uh, who was referred to as the angel of the Lord, that was Gabriel. Um, you can find that uh, reference in Luke 1, verse 19. Gabriel's the one that stands in the presence of God. And, of course, from our foundation scripture, uh, ministering spirits. Angels were also called ministering spirits, referred to as ministering spirits. Now, <clears throat> how does this message about angels relate to sin? Why don't I go through all those those names and go through uh, uh, all those things that angels did? Why? Because it's critical to show that angels were critical to salvation, reaching the lost, <clears throat> and the church. So their whole their whole purpose, because they were created. How is this related to sin? You have to look at the uh, how, uh, angels were created. So Jesus created the angels. They were created in the spirit realm. They had a specific design and a specific purpose. They were to serve at the pleasure of the Lord, being dispatched to wherever he wanted them to go and to do and say whatever he wanted them to do and say. That's, that was their job. There's no other option. If they sin, there's no redemption for sin. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who did he love? He so loved the world. So Jesus came and he died, not for the angels, he died for us. So angels were created in spirit realm. Their purpose was to serve at the pleasure of God. <clears throat> now, 
angels, we're going to go to Ezekiel 28. Go to verse 14. It says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So <clears throat> angels were perfect when they were created. From the day they were created, they were perfect. And this particular account is a reference to Lucifer that he was perfect until iniquity was found in him. Somewhere along the line, uh, Lucifer got a bright idea and decided that he was going to do his own thing and keep all the glory for himself. And about a third of the other angels that were created, they went and defected with him. So there's no redemption for them. There's no redemption for them because, and we're going to explain that, man, we were created like angels. We were created male and female. Then we were placed into Adam, okay, uh, in Genesis chapter 1 towards the end. Then God formed man in Genesis chapter 2. He formed man from the dust. And male and female went into man. And it wasn't until uh, Adam underwent surgery where he, a rib was removed by the Lord and Eve was created. So we were created in the spirit realm, but we were formed and, and clothed in a body in the earth realm. So we were OK until Adam sinned. And when he sinned, we were separated from God. So that situation needed a remedy. So because of God and and how he created us, we are in the earth realm. <clears throat> Because of the condition of sin, we've separated from God. We needed a redeemer. And that's where Jesus comes on the scene. So this message relates to uh, sin in that angels have no, no redemption from sin. But by the grace of God, we do. Humans do. Um, angels were judged when sin was found in them. I want to give that reference to Second Peter. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter two, go to verse four. It says, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So that's what happened to them at the point that they sinned. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord that that's not the case for us. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for 1 John 1, 9. So we see angels have no comeback for sin. You think about it, they're in eternity. Gabriel once said he stands in the presence of God. What else would bring them back? What would bring them back if they defected from that point? I don't know what would. How does this message relate to the cross? We've gone through a lot of scripture. <clears throat> the actions that we cover today, Old Testament, New Testament, that the angels were involved in. We talked about Abraham. If Abraham did not stop uh uh, his plan to sacrifice Isaac. There would be there would be no Isaac. There would be no Jacob. There would be no Israel. OK, <clears throat> so the lineage would be affected. David, uh, 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 Samson, uh, Gideon, all that, all that would be would be impacted. So. The whole thing, angels were involved to get Jesus to the cross. They were involved to get Jesus to the cross. And even after that, they helped the church. And they also were involved in getting people saved. OK, so from the Garden of Eden to the leading of the Israelites out of Egypt to speaking to Joseph in dreams, 
uh, uh, telling him to flee Egypt and to take Mary and Jesus with him, with them. That it was all pertinent to get Jesus to the cross. Uh, Luke 22, I want to look at that. Because the angels ministered to Jesus in Gethsemane. And this is right before he went to the cross. Uh, Luke 22. Luke chapter 22. Go to verse 41. Okay. Luke 22. Verse 41. Jesus, this is Jesus. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And <clears throat> being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, it, was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Jesus was at a pivotal moment of his earthly experience and angels came and they ministered to him. You know what else that 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 connotes? Daddy got involved. Daddy came to see about his son because the angels serve at the pleasure of God. They go and do what God wants. They represent God in the earth. So sometimes they when they when they show up, everybody's reaction is they bow down to the face of the ground because it's as if God's there. God came and saw about his son, Jesus. And this was right before he got ready to do one of the greatest things, the most important thing for us in the earth realm. All right. Angels also ministered Jesus after he was tempted uh, in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. That accounts found in Matthew 4 verses 9 through 11. And when we, that's a good reminder when we are going through things that um, that the Lord does care about us, that the Lord will minister to us. Uh, when we go through a great trial and actually usually after we come through a great trial, that's usually when we're most vulnerable. Elijah, after he defeated <clears throat> um, um, those prophets um, and God put on a big display, he got a word about Jezebel and what she said she was going to do to him. And he almost went to a fetal ball. So um, he was vulnerable after that great victory. And it was seen that, that as when God shows up and displays his might, and does mighty works and wonders that it will give you the utmost confidence. But there's a point of vulnerability in that, too. And we have to be careful of that. But angels come on the scene and they will help us. All right. So in summary, it's evidence in Scripture that angels played and still do play a pivotal role in God's plan. They are critical in getting Jesus to the cross, helping to reach the loss and helping the early church church continue after its start. Angels were called or referred to as many different names and many different functions, but they were called ministers. And this applies to us as well. So we covered today a lot in scripture. But I want to talk about that relation to sin where. Thank God that we have first John one nine. Sin is a separator and God has a zero tolerance to sin. Thank God for his grace. His long suffering with us. Uh, we miss the mark sometimes. And we and we're thankful that there is provision for us that if we desire to repent and not and not trans uh uh, transgress against God or anyone else and, and stay on the right path and do what he wants us to do. That we can be restored to a right relationship with him. And so now we're at this point where we have an opportunity to uh, make sure that we are right with God. I mean, we talked about sin and, and, and how critical it is that, that, that we have no part of it, just like God does not want to have any part with sin. Even when it was laid upon his son, Jesus, uh, at the cross, God still has a zero. Even though Jesus knew no sin, he became sin. But with that on him, God just, no, can't do it. He doesn't want to do it. So 
we have an opportunity to enter into a relationship with him where we are declared righteous and where we can begin a, a new life with him and live a successful Christian life. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what that means is with the heart, you, with, with the heart you believe, your belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that what Jesus has done on the cross for you, you believe it and you accept it as true. You confess Jesus as Lord. And, 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 and when you confess it, what you believe in your heart, it's real. It's real. You can say words. If anybody can say words. But if it's not in the heart, then it doesn't mean anything. So here's an opportunity to receive the Lord. If you desire to receive the Lord, repeat this prayer after me. God in heaven, I come to you now with the need to acknowledge Jesus as Savior and Lord. I'm confessing with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And because I believe that, I am saved. Thank you, Father, for saving me. And I ask also that you will fill me with your power, who is your Holy Spirit, your anointing, that I can build myself up and be strong in the Lord. Thank you, Father, for saving me and filling me with your power. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, if this ministered to you, please, please use the contact information down below it uh, on the screen and contact us and let us know how your life has been impacted. We also have information that we will send to you that will help you get started in your brand new life. Well, it's been a great joy being able to minister to you today. My prayer is that you were blessed and that you got some things that, that will help you in your Christian walk. And before we leave, I'd like to pray uh, a blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you so much for the word that has gone forth today. We thank you, Father God, for those who have tuned in. And we just give you praise, honor, and glory <clears throat> that you have ministered unto them. Father, we ask that you uh, cause the message to stir in their hearts and that uh, there will be a draw that they will begin to study out the scriptures and get more of you for themselves. We just thank you, Father, and give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom. <laughs>